This video has been produced using evidence gathered and analysed during the course of the investigation. The flight path animation is for illustrative purposes only and should not be used for further analysis. Following the investigation into the loss of control and collision with terrain involving Airbus helicopters EC-130 T2, registered X-ray Whiskey Delta, near Mount Disappointment north of Melbourne in 2022, highlights that all Visual Flight Rules pilots need to develop the knowledge and skills required to manage the risk of inadvertent flight into instrument meteorological conditions. On the morning of the 31st of March 2022, EC-130 helicopters Whiskey Victor Victor and X-ray Whiskey Delta, operated by Microflight, were preparing to transport a charter group from the Batman Park helicopter landing site on Melbourne's Yarra River under visual flight rules to the town of Ulupna on the Victorian and New South Wales border. The recommended VFR route for a track north of Melbourne, outside a controlled airspace, was through Kilmore Gap. With concerns about the weather forecast the night before and on the morning of the accident, the Melbourne airport forecast indicated to the pilots that the weather through Kilmore Gap would be unsuitable for flight below cloud. So the pilots elected to transit over Mount Disappointment, about 12 nautical miles to the east of Kilmore Gap. At around 7.40am, both helicopters, each with a pilot and four passengers on board, lifted from the helicopter landing site, with Whiskey Victor Victor departing first and with X-ray Whiskey Delta following close behind. The pair of helicopters initially headed east to remain outside a controlled airspace before turning north, climbing to 2,500 feet and then to 3,500 feet. While tracking north towards Mount Disappointment, the helicopters climbed above a layer of scattered cloud and were below a layer of broken cloud. As the helicopters approached Mount Disappointment, the pilot of Whiskey Victor Victor noted the two layers of cloud appearing to converge ahead of them. A short time later, the pilot of Whiskey Victor Victor was confronted with a wall of cloud in front, to the left and to the right of their intended track and broadcast their intention to turn around. Reporting that the pilot of X-ray Whiskey Delta was initially confused as to why Whiskey Victor Victor was turning around and might have thought that the conditions were suitable to continue, the pilot of Whiskey Victor Victor broadcast U-turn, U-turn, U-turn and conducted a sharp left turn onto a southerly track. At this time, an Aperio Vision 1000 camera recording on board X-ray Whiskey Delta, positioned above and behind the pilot, showed the cloud through the windscreen appearing to change from broken to overcast. Shortly after, X-ray Whiskey Delta banked steeply to the left while descending. During the turn, the nose attitude lowered and the rate of descent increased. At 7.57am, with the vertical speed indicator at full-scale descent deflection, the onboard camera showed a layer of old growth trees becoming visible in the cloud. In the last seconds of camera footage, the nose of X-ray Whiskey Delta pitched up significantly. The camera's cabin area microphone detected the sounds of the rotor blade striking the trees, with the high rotor speed warning activated. The wreckage site was located at about midday. Tragically, all five occupants were fatally injured and the helicopter was destroyed. The helicopter was subject to a post-impact fire, resulting in the destruction of some components. However, from the components available to the ATSB, investigators determined there was no evidence of any pre-existing defects that would have prevented normal operations. The pilot's iPad, the Aperio camera and vehicle and engine monitoring display from the helicopter were removed from the accident site and transported to the ATSB's technical facilities in Canberra. Although significantly damaged, ATSB data recovery specialists were successfully able to recover data from the damaged devices. Vision and audio from the camera, flight tracking data from the iPad and engine performance information all combined to provide valuable evidence for the investigation team to understand what happened during the flight. The ATSB found the pilots continued the flight as conditions deteriorated below VMC until a rapid change of course was required to avoid entering cloud. The pilot of X-ray Whiskey Delta, with no instrument flying experience, did not maintain adequate control of the pitch attitude during their attempted U-turn and a high rate of descent developed resulting in a collision with terrain. The operator had not mandated several of the risk controls available to them for their day VFR pilots, which included inadvertent IMC recovery training and basic instrument flying competency checks during operator proficiency checks, and nor were they required to by the regulations. The operator had also not introduced an inadvertent IMC recovery procedure for their air transport operations, or a pre-flight risk assessment to trigger an escalation process for marginal weather conditions identified at the pre-flight planning stage. The operator had identified poor weather conditions as a risk. However, their management of that risk was limited to the regulatory requirements, and did not consider an inadvertent IMC event. 
The Civil Aviation Safety Regulations Part 133 for rotorcraft air transport did not require the risk of a VFR inadvertent IMC event to be managed, except through avoidance. Recovery from such an event was not addressed. The investigation identified five safety issues owned by Microflight and CASA. One safety recommendation was also issued to CASA. ATSB Chief Commissioner Angus Mitchell says weather remains one of the most significant causes of fatal accidents in aviation in Australia. Over the years, many recommendations have been made by accident investigation agencies, regulatory and industry bodies to reduce the risk of VFR into IMC accidents. Despite this, however, we continue to see these tragic accidents repeating. With this investigation, the ATSB has recommended that further defences be implemented at a regulatory level, specifically to commercial passenger carrying helicopter operations, contained within Part 133, to provide additional safeguards for passengers to reduce the risks of VFR pilots inadvertently entering an IMC environment, or to increase the likelihood of a safe recovery from an INC environment. The ATSB encourages all VFR pilots, no matter what they fly, to continue to develop their skills and knowledge so as to understand and manage the risks posed by inadvertent flight into IMC. Educational material from regulators and industry bodies, such as the Helicopter Association International's 56 Seconds to Live online training, are core to this skill. Decision making where marginal weather conditions are a likelihood at any point during a flight should not be done on the fly. The use of a pre-flight risk assessment tool that triggers an escalation if conditions are marginal for a VFR flight can provide operators with a mature risk-based approach to oversight flight planning. In addition, the use of en route weather decision points to turn around or land before the weather deteriorates to a VFR minimum will also reduce the risk of inadvertently entering an IMC environment. The effective management of risk relies on multiple layers of controls to reduce the risk of single point of failure accidents. This includes training and procedures for avoidance and recovery, which can be enhanced with equipment such as autopilots to reduce the risk of loss of control and terrain awareness and warning systems to reduce the risk of controlled flight into terrain. During the course of the investigation, Microflight advised the ATSB they had initiated a number of proactive safety actions including the modification of their AS350 helicopters with the Garmin GFC600H flight control system, upgrading their fleet of AS350s and EC130s with the Garmin G500H primary flight display and multifunction display, incorporating synthetic vision and a terrain alerting functionality to improve pilot situational awareness in a degraded visual environment, have acquired instrument flying training hoods, and require all pilots to complete the Helicopter Association International's 56 Seconds to Live online training. Introduced a company task rejection policy statement into their operations manual, requiring their pilots to cancel VFR flights if it's deemed that VMC cannot be assured for the planned flight. It also provides management support to their pilots for cancelling their flights if the risk profile is deemed unsafe by the pilot in command. And have obtained Airbus Helicopter Training Centre approval providing them with greater access to the manufacturer's technical resources for training their staff and operating and maintaining their helicopter fleet. You can read the final report by searching AO-2022-016 on the ATSB's website or from the link in the description below.